Right, um, so since this session is being recorded, um, I just wanted to make a disclaimer. While I work for an amazing company called Microsoft, the findings that I'm going to share with you today are of my own independent research and unrelated to the company that I work for, unless otherwise referenced. Cool. Awesome. Right, now the exciting stuff, the why behind the danger of AI. It is said that the Western civilization has not been around for one trillion seconds. Yet, as humans, we have managed to invent this amazing technology that, according to the World Economic Forum, will increase our global economy by $16 trillion in just 11 years from now. You can buy 16 companies the size of some of the big tech giants with that. Yet at the same time, we have some of the world's most influential leaders, researchers, entrepreneurs, guys like Nick Bostrom, Elon Musk, late Dr. Stephen Hawking, warning us that AI could be an existential threat to humanity, that it could be our final invention if we are not careful, that we are summoning the demon. But why? Why is AI talked about as a dangerous technology? Is it a Terminator and a Skynet scenario? Or are we looking at something more fundamental here? Now this is a question that needs to be broken down into smaller questions and looked at from different angles. And today, I'm going to share with you a few of those angles that I have studied. Starting with one of the most fundamental questions, is the danger even real? Or is it just some hype created by the media to create another billion, or in this case, a trillion dollar industry, as some people believe? Well, to understand this, I went through the history of AI and started looking at different patterns of data, events, and milestones that happened that have led us to such perception today. I'm going to start sharing those findings by starting with one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful driver behind this industry or any other successful industry, money. An interesting pattern that I realized in my data is that ever since the big tech giants and disruptive startups started using AI to generate profit, everyone else seems to have started following them. It's become like a fashion trend. A celebrity starts it somewhere, and everyone else just follows, regardless of whether it suits them or not. And this blind following has made AI into an investment dumping ground. One, that's forecasted to be 38.5 billion US dollars in 2019. So, let's take a closer look at what is it exactly that we are investing in. Starting with one of the most fundamental subsets of AI, robotics, a field that is said to have roots that go thousands of years ago when people started creating artificial limbs, a field that has been very helpful in tasks that have been dangerous or even impossible for humans to perform, like working in uh, mining, nuclear power plants, deep sea exploration, or covering for us when we had a shortage of labor, like painting wheelbarrows back in 1966 in Norway, or creating production lines. However, the most interesting milestone in robotics happened when we created robots that started to walk. And later on, started to mimic other human tasks like vision, speech, navigation. It was after this point that machines were no longer stationary. Neither were they characters in science fiction movies. They literally started to walk among us. In them, some questionable developments. Meet Fedor. Fedor is a Russian robot programmed to go to space in 2021. Now, Fedor can drive a car, use power tools, inject syringes, shoot two guns at the same time, and when he, it is bored, it even works out. <laughs> now, which one of these you're going to need in space? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Or other concepts like self-flying drones that can kill people with surgical precision. While these don't exist yet, I've met a developer that can develop this technology right now. Now, pretty interesting escalation from something that innocent to where we are, right? But the physical engineering of robotics in isolation would only give us a few sophisticated pieces of hardware. This is where the next piece of the puzzle, which is machine learning, comes in the picture. A field that allows machines to learn with minimum to no human interaction. Now, this field is particularly interesting to me because it's like an intelligence mirror 
that us as humans look into in the sense that it's both smart and lazy. And this combination has meant that our machines come up with some very interesting ways to solve problems. Since it's Halloween, I'm going to share a couple of chilling stories with you. In a simulated environment, there was a machine learning algorithm that was programmed to find out how to apply a minimum force to a plane landing on an aircraft carrier. Instead, what the machine did was to apply a huge force so that it could overload its program's memory, registering minimum force as a result. Apply this to a real life scenario, it will kill the pilot. But hey, it did exactly what it was told, register minimum force. Or another algorithm that was given a list of unsorted numbers to sort, and what it did instead was to delete the list altogether, so technically there was no longer an unsorted list of numbers. Imagine asking that algorithm to make sure there are no unhappy or unhealthy human beings. <laughs> now, Walter Vanini puts this problem beautifully in that he says the most ethical problem with coding is that machines do what you tell them to do, not what you mean. Now, I'm not saying that the danger here is the fact that we are failing. I'm saying that the danger here is that despite the fact that we are failing and despite all these unanswered questions, we're still seeing more and more developments in this field with every company, every developer thinking that their program is going to be different. Now, another interesting aspect of these intelligence mirrors is that when fed our historic data to learn from, which they often are, they also pick up on our biases. Like the US justice system that used a machine learning algorithm to help judges make unbiased decisions for the defendants. And instead, it started giving black defendants longer, harsher sentences compared to white defendants in 7,000 audited cases, even though race was not a defined parameter in the program. Or the Amazon recruiting tool that started to choose more men over women for technical roles because it had learned from the past 10 years of data. So we have our foot on the accelerator of this car that is so powerful and is going so fast without looking at where we're going and without looking at where our speed bumps are. So to answer the first question, yes, I think the danger is real. And this brings me to my second question. Are we doing enough to prevent the danger? And what does enough even mean? Now, this is another question that can be and must be answered in different ways. And I found one of those ways. I performed an experiment to understand what percentage of our entire publications in AI is dedicated to health and safety, regulatory, and ethics. Now, I needed to define enough here. So I brought nuclear energy into the mix because it's another tool that can be as destructive or as beneficial as AI. What shocked me about the results is that even though we are publishing twice as many papers in artificial intelligence, our studies in those three topics compared to nuclear are half as much. 10% in AI compared to 20% in nuclear in 2018 to be exact. Now this is when, unlike a destructive AI algorithm, no one can create an atom bomb from the comfort of their bedroom and a PC and an internet connection. So no, we are not doing enough. But I'm not saying that it's all bad. I'm not saying that we should stop these improvements and these developments altogether. Because one, that's unnecessary given how much good AI can actually do. And two, impossible given how much our lives already depend on AI. What I'm saying is that we need to start opening our eyes and more importantly, our minds. Look at where we are going. Really question what we are developing. Every single person can contribute to understand and ask, what are we building? Why are we building it? How could it go wrong? And how can we prevent it? And I'm not alone. There are some really big companies out there that have come to realize this danger as well. Microsoft has a team called FATE, Fairness, Accountability, Transparency, and Ethics, that work on understanding the complex social implications of AI. We have recently established a group called ETCH, Ethics, Transparency, Culture, and Humanity. IEEE is now providing courses on ethical AI design. 
Partnership on AI is another organization that's bringing everyone together, sharing the learnings about AI. But we need more. We need the contribution of every investor, every developer, every user to really ask those fundamental questions. What are we building? Why are we building it? How can it go wrong? And how can we prevent it? Let us be that generation that sets up the future generations up for success as opposed to the ones that paved the path to humanity's destruction. Thank you.